I'm gonna go to your computer. You're not here right now. Now these are obviously like multiplayer looking characters. Does that guy look like a Joker or what? Like his face looks like he has white face paint. He's got kind of the purple red thing going on. That's funny. And I think that's Aveline. All right, hacking time. Poop, 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 poop. Time to randomly move my thing around so that way I can find out where I need to go. Whee! And hey, look at that. I really want more voice memos because then I can just sit back and listen and listen to Nolan North be a pretty decent voice actor. Nope, all right. All of you, here's the initial presentation I received. It's a little light on facts, but these guys know what they're doing. We'll know more when they arrive on Monday. Let me know if you feel like attending. John. Why now? Why wait? Why Bloom? As the world's foremost innovator of high-tech, high-performance communications and security technology, Bloom stands poised to reshape the way we think about information security architecture, ISA. Uh-huh. The ISA. Uh, anyways, specializing in everything from mobile tele- uh, tele- telephony? Telephony? From mobile telephony? Because I want to just say telephones. Specializing in everything from mobile telephony to home and computing, or to home computing, to digital imaging processes, to network security systems, we make we we take great pride in the fact that we helped create most of the markets we now dominate. And nowhere is our expertise more apparent than in our flagship product, CTOS or CTOS, C T O S, a groundbreaking proprietary security software operating system. Isn't that in? Isn't that in Watchdogs? So what is CTOS? Confidential. Integral. Accessible. Available. Stable. It just works. Put simple, CTOS is the most stable and user-friendly software security controller we, we ever devised. Can Abstergo afford to pass up perfection? CTOS Dream, the Bloom Promise. A dozen cities, 100 major corporations, 1,000 small businesses. For almost a decade, CTOS has served its clients need with a track record unparalleled in the modern age. How do we do it? Dude, I really do hope there's a fucking, like, a real legitimate connection and this isn't just an easter egg between Watch Dogs and, and Assassin's Creed because I would really love if there were just, like, multiple game series where all of this shit tied back together because that would be so cool. Okay? I mean, we already had, like, the easter egg in Far Cry 3 in the DLC where we saw, like, the Abstergo logo and it took me, like, a while to realize what it was. But, yeah, it'd be so cool! It would just kind of popped up, you know, in the middle of uh, playing Watch Dogs, which I will play when that comes out. You know, you're just playing in like, oh, hey, Stergo. Mm. Because the way they have the story set up, you technically could have a bunch of different types of storylines linking together. You know, because there's so much, because there's so little going on in the Assassin's War, in the Assassin's Creed world, along with so much that I think it's possible. It's like how in, um, it's like how in, like the Marvel and DC universes, they can be focusing on these characters and they can be doing like, you know, they could be saving cities from getting blown up by nuclear weapons and shit like that. And meanwhile, on the other side of the world, there's a, there's just Superman having some tea. Having some coffee or some shit, right? So maybe we can get something like that. I'd love something like that in the game world where it's not j not 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 like Marvel stuff, because Marvel's always, you know, or Marvel and DC, those are always connected with their inside universes. But I want more from games. Like, here's watchdogs, and you have all this hacking and stuff going on, and eventually it connects back to Assassin's Creed. I'm just saying. Alright, what the hell is this? Originally assumed to be an analog computing device built for the purposes of determining the future positions of astral bodies, Abstergo industry scientists have recently discovered that the Anticaria Antic Antitheria Hmm The Antic Theria mechanism. I'm just calling it Antic Theria. The Antic Theria mechanism is merely one small portion of a much larger tool, a so-called prognostation. Prognostation, prognostication, there we go. 
prognostication machine, thought to have been used by the first civilization to make probability-based predictions of future events. It has been confirmed, for instance, that our precursor race used such a device in conjunction with their inherent precognitive abilities to locate and contact Mr. Desmond Miles, the source of the sample's 17th strand, for purposes that shall remain classified. It is also known that due to the nature of these quantum probability measurements, that such machines would have been exceedingly difficult to use and that many hundreds of thousands of trials would have been needed to peak such great distances into the future. Interesting. Okay, so this is a device that allowed them to look into the future and contact Desmond Miles, supposedly. Alright. Baghdad Battery. A mystery that has puzzled scientists for decades. The Baghdad Battery's ultimate secret has finally been discovered. This year, researchers at Absurgo Industries determined that these batteries contained at one time a synthetic precursor element capable of producing power by harnessing energies generated by the passage of time. Ooh. Eerily similar to what theoretical physicists have called time crystals, this unknown crystalline material was supposed to generate tiny but unlimited levels of energy simply by siphoning energy from the passage of time itself. Though minute, the resulting power was likely enough to power a small LED, resulting in a humble but incredibly efficient means of producing light. To date, a functioning precursor time crystal has not been located. Aww. Blood vials. Little is known about the function of these blood vials, though dozens have been found since Abstergo took an interest in the recovery at some point in the late 1980s. To date, only three have been found with their original contents intact, and of these, only one contained a confirmed sample of precursor DNA. Abstergo Industries ex executives have expressed a particular interest in locating more precursor DNA, and if possible, samples of our so-called mitochondrial Eve. As far-fetched as this sounds, please take special care to identify any vials you might stumble upon in a memory replay. Unfortunately, as the average half-life of DNA is a mere 500 years, any sample old enough to belong to either source, 80,000 years or more, will have degraded well beyond usefulness. We suspect it would require a minimum of over 250 similarly preserved samples and a hell of a lot of luck to sequence an entire precursor genome, though the true figure is probably close to 500. Yeah, so much for recreating uh, precursors. See, memory seals. Ooh. These things! These were used in Assassin's Creed Revelations. These devices, pre powerful in function but limited in scope, were used by the precursor for civilization to re record brief memory impressions, which could then be played black Blech. which could then be played back or re-experienced by another user at a later date. Judging by their scarcity, fewer than 40 have been ever found or accounted for, it appears that these seals were not wielded casually by the precursor race, but were intended for use only by the wealthiest and most powerful members of that society. To date, no seals containing rec recorded Precursor memories have been found, and only a few have been known to contain any information whatsoever. The seals used by the assassin Altier ibn Lahad to pass information to Ezio Auditore da Firenze are suspect suspected to be functional to this day, but as of this writing, their whereabouts are unknown. As a point of interest, it can be revealed that many of Abstergo's early breakthroughs in genetic memory technology came about through the close study of these artifacts, although current Animus technology is not based on their architecture. Neat. Okay, I'm done reading all this stuff. I know people don't like me reading. <laughs> people really don't like me reading. I'm sorry about that. But I want to learn some information, or at least read on information I care about. Alright, there's got to be some more shit to do. I'm looking around, seeing if there's anything. Hey, look at this! This is a security run one room that we haven't been in. Okay. Let's hack into this. I just want memos. Be careful now. As the data moves, there are security programs constantly monitoring the data flow. You need to sneak past them, or they will destroy your data and send it back home. Oh god, it's a different one. Okay. Goal, you need to transfer the data from the starting point on the left to the finishing position on the right. The security programs of the data stream will destroy your data if they touch it. When data is destroyed, it is returned to its starting position. These security programs change states. When they go from in, uh, they go from inactive to active. When they are active, they will destroy your data. When they are inactive, you can move over them. When the game area edges become active, they turn red. Active edges destroy the player data. Okay. This will be interesting. So I can go along these edges? Oh! You can go up- You can go down to pop up at the top. I don't know what that's actually called. Oh boy. This is scary. This first one already? Ah. How are we gonna do this? I need to be able to... Ah, we can follow the stream! Awesome! Okay, this isn't so bad then. I 
I figured I'd have to like manually move my own thing around and hope for the best, but nope, this is easy. As long as I don't make any slight fuck ups, which I'm sure I will in the future. Woo! Yes! I have now resumed the practice of dressing as a man. I have put off my woman's dress. Why did you take it? Who made you take it? I took it of my own free will. With no constraints. I prefer a man's dress to a woman's. You made an oath, Jeanne. You swore to never again dress as a man. I never meant to swear that I would not resume the practice. Why have you done so? Because... It is more lawful and suitable for me to return to the practice of wearing a man's dress. Being always among men, than to have a woman's dress. I have resumed it because a promise made to me has not been. How is he? Our three doing well. Are we still in 18th century Hungary? No. His connection is so stable, he's jumped between a few ancestors today. We're in 15th century France now. Turns out he's related to one of Joan of Arc's executioners. <laughs> Surprise. But Eileen, yesterday Vidic asked me to help him work out some of the bugs in his audiovisual renderer, and I told him... No, no, no. Come on, Satish, not you. It wouldn't be permanent. A, a few months at most. Months? That will kill every ounce of momentum we have. It won't, I promise. Honestly, I think this could help us. If, if I can get a look at what these people are doing, we could... Come on. He's trying to pull you over to his side. Don't you see that? He's luring you with quick victory and prestige. That's not what this is about, honestly. I need to get back to work. Eileen, I'm sorry. Do what you must. I'll survive. Oh, Fucking Vidic. Even in between the Templars, they're having problems. Surrogate Initiative, Test Session 32. April 2nd, 1981. Host Eileen Bach. DNA sample SV1970. Miriam. Miriam, are you awake? What? Miriam, they're coming for me. Who oh, is? The guards? I see them from my window, amassing in the courtyard. My time is up. Basil, don't say this. You don't know that. Forgive me for this, Miriam. But I must tell you something. The artifact. We have it. But only Oscar and I know its location. Don't tell me! They will release you. Your family has connections. You must take the artifact and bring it to the assassins in Paris. Please don't! I don't want to know. It's safer if I don't. Hush now. If I die, knowledge of its location dies with me. You must bring it to the assassins. Assassins? I don't understand. It's a spy of St. Petrus. No, I don't want to hear. Sound 7! You've lost me now. I have no idea what's going on. Uh... Hello? Eileen, hi. It's Carl. Carl, I know it's you. Sorry, you just sound exhausted. Did I wake you? No, no, I'm... I've just been busy. It sounds like it. I'm just a little tired, that's all. No, I mean, your... your project sounds fascinating. Your colleague, Dr. Warren Vidic? He called me recently and he told me what you've been up to. He what? Warren? Yeah, he told us about your research. Memories, ancestry, all of that. He even asked if we'd be willing to come in and... No! Jesus, no! What the hell is he doing? Eileen, it's okay. We signed some papers, non-disclosure stuff. No! He's trying to fuck me over! Damn it! Eileen, we just talked about my mother. Just like you and I did. World War II. That's all. It's the artifact. The what? Carl? If he calls you again, you tell him you work through me, okay? That's it. Vidic has been a pain in my ass for years. And I don't need him getting all the glory for my two years of hard work. All right. Uh, so how should I go about this? I mean, the wheels are in motion. I... I don't know. Just go through me if he contacts you again. Please? All right. You'll do that? Of course. Yes. Thank you, Carl. I'm sorry I was short with you. I've just been... exhausted. That's all. It's all right, hon. Just... just take care of yourself. 
Morning, Eileen. We're almost ready. Just a few more adjustments. Hmm. Okay. I had the team do some research on this artifact we've been chasing, and it appears the Third Reich actually found something matching its description sometime in 1940. Uh, Eileen, are you all right? Sorry. Yeah, I'm fine. Just a little scattered. Biddick called my ex-husband last night. He wants to put him in the Animus. To find the artifact before us? Exactly. Well, it would be faster using Biddick's Animus. And maybe that would get us back to our original work. Satish, if we let that happen, then all our money dries up. Lillian is paying for us to find the artifact, not improve our methods. Do you understand? Right, of course. I'm sorry. Let's just, let's just burn those bridges when we cross them. Are we ready? Yes, just a few more adjustments, Signore. I made a small change to the genetic input modulator. I'm hoping that buys us a few more minutes. Even a few seconds would be nice. I'm ready. All right. Settle in. I'm so very, very confused because it just jumped to like four different things. You have Eileen and her team, they're trying to find an artifact, but Warren Vidic's got his Animus project, project, and we don't know what's going on. The file file's called Subject Zero, but this is Audio File 4. Ooh. I just want to. Audio files recorded from a collection of real to real tapes found in the resident of the late Dr. Warren Vidic. So he actually took down the project. Uh, I just want to hear stuff from Desmond. We know about Desmond. I don't do well with new information, okay? All right. I gotta do this again. Oh, these are fucking huge. This is easy as all hell. It's pretty much just go straight, 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 boom, boom. Ha <laughs> ha. Bypassing standard security. Yeah, I did it. Okay, uh, it's been yes, a few weeks since the last recording. Sorry about that. Of course, I guess it's just a few seconds for you. A little leap down the playlist. Um, anyway, um, I was talking about Clay. Uh, Kazmarek, Subject 16. So, when I fell into a coma back in Italy and woke up in the Animus Black Room, it was, um, so calming. It felt like I, uh, had woken up into a dream. A haze. A, a dream where none of this mess had ever happened. Uh, felt like I should just be getting ready for another day of pouring drinks at bad weather and, uh, another day of complaining about being between girlfriends and Wondering what the hell to do with myself. But, uh, when I saw Clay, just sitting there, it started to come back, you know, piece by piece. And when he told me about Lucy, I, uh, <laughs> fuck, you know, it, it hurt. You know, realizing that I killed her without thinking or feeling anything. Not at the time, anyway. Well, then, things just kept piling on. There were more memories of Ezio and Altair and the first civilization. And then, right before he vanished, Clay passed on his memories. To me. He showed me everything he had seen and lived through, and it was... It was brief, but overwhelming. I'm not really sure how to explain. He saw glimpses of Adam and Eve and their escape from slavery. He saw the beginning and the end of the war between the first Civ and humans. He saw Minerva, and Juno, and Tinia trying to work out their their calculations. At least that's what they called them. They, they had these tools, these powerful uh, machines that could predict possible futures. Not what was going to happen, but what... Uh, but what could happen? Probabilities. And, well, they spent a lot of energy trying to figure out what was the most likely scenario for the future. Theirs and ours. And 
in the end, I guess they figured I was their most likely candidate. Some guy named Desmond living at the beginning of the 21st century of the Common Era. But which Desmond was the right one? Because, you see, probability is a weird thing. It can branch out in so many ways. Which version of me did they need? Was it the Desmond who got married early and had a son? One who stayed single in New York? Or, or was it the Desmond who moved to San Francisco to be a waiter? Maybe uh, it was the Desmond who worked at an auto body shop in Chicago. Or, or maybe it was the me who never ran away from his parents in the first place. First Civ had countless variations to choose from, but in the end, the uh, lucky one was me. I'm the Desmond their best calculations spit out. I'm the Desmond they left their messages for, and I guess I have to live with that honor. What an honor. Pretty tired. Uh, there'll be more later. Ciao. I miss Desmond so much. Ah, at least we got the memos. But yeah, I, I like this. This is this even if even though Desmond's dead, at least they're kind of showing because there are things that can be done in games, and then there are things that can't that aren't usually done in games. And this is kind of one of them, in that like like if you read a book, and if you read a book, you can you the, generally if it's a good writer, you get the feelings of everything, the perceptions, every kind of detail you could care about is there. They describe everything. And in video games, you kind of... In video games and movies, you get the details. You get the basic details, but you don't get what they're thinking. You don't really get the, the character's perspectives. You get the viewer perspective, watching everything happen. And so, you know, we, we see all the things about Desmond, and we ha we're hearing his past, but here's him sitting down and saying what they wrote his thoughts out to be. And it's like... That's intense! <laughs> Especially the part about Clay. That part with Clay in Revelations was definitely like another one of those really big moments. Because it was, I think it was like just after, uh, no, it was before the real ending. You know, as like the Animus was starting to try to erase some shit and Clay grabbed him and moved him on. I didn't know that he had moved on the memories. But okay, I, I like that. Alright, let's see if I can find some more memos or something. I miss Desmond. <laughs> okay. I uh, know we've, we've had uh, there now there have been a few parts with me walking around the Animus, so I've got a few of you guys' opinions, and a few of you guys are like, I like the being able to insert myself as the character kind of thing, and I, I you know, I know that's a thing. I'm just not one to care for it. You know, I mean, I'm, I might as well talk about it. There's not much else to do while I'm walking around doing this shit. Um, but, yeah, no, like, you have characters who are completely silent, but they have, like, a backstory. And you don't get any options, you don't get any kind of influence. You know, it's like... It's like how with Shepard in Mass Effect, or the character in Dragon Age, or in Knights of the Old Republic. They have these backstories, and you can you can select their path, and they have voices. Well, not the Dragon Age one character, or the KOTOR characters, but, you know, you could choose what they were going to say, and the events that were going to happen, but here, you get the whole Gordon Freeman thing, where it's just kind of, you're a silent guy, and you have these skills that are necessary for your job, and everyone just kind of tells you to do your job. And you just kind of, you're, you're a silent yes man. And I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Uh, it just, it just, I don't... I'd rather be a character that has voices, or a real backstory, something that I can connect with. You know? So if they did something like, stab me, or, or fucking like, you know, try to kill the character off, I could sit there and go, no, not me, not, you know, like Desmond Miles, well, okay, when Desmond Miles died, that pissed me off, because like he said, the whole probable futures thing, I fucking talked about that, and then yeah, I was like, that was a probable future, you could have done something else, Ah, oh, damn, his computer's just right there, but I don't have access to his room, fuck, I'll have to do that some other time then.
But, um... You know, they showed a probable future of what would happen to humanity if he didn't turn on the shields. And I thought that was kind of dumb. Like, oh no, humanity's go gonna go back to fighting and stuff like that. I'm like... Okay, well, we're gonna do that even with Juno here. Except now Juno's gonna be trying to take over the world. Is that really a safer option? Not really. But, oh well. <laughs> it was their cop-out so they could continue the story. Hey, Sean. Do you know if there's any computers around for me to hack? I, I, I'm not gonna need a coffee, because I, I don't like coffee. At all. I wish I did. Coffee smells great. They have all these fucking menu options, like, oh, you want a peppermint mocha? And you're like, no, I don't want any kind of mocha. Now, you know what? Before we move back up to the Animus, I gotta say, these are really meh visuals for what they've done with... I don't know, because it, it doesn't matter so much when you're in third person and you're in the Animus and you're playing as an assassin, but when you're, a, like, a, a person just walking around, look at this. Here's... Here's Sean, and his weird kind of mixture of higher res and lower res textures. And barely any animations? Yeah, no. Like when we were talking with um, the CCO up top, all the way on the rooftop, the French dude, yeah, he, he barely moved. <laughs> that was a scary kind of animation, and I don't like it. I'm sure it'll improve in the future. We'll see. <gasps> you know, I hope we get access to other floors. I mean, if there's like 33 computers for me to hack, then yeah, there should be other floors for me to go to the hack computers. Because I doubt there's 33 computers just on this floor and the ones above. Alright, let's get back to the Animus. We've had enough of this Abstergo fun. Actually, you know what? I've been going for a couple hours, so I will be right back, and when we jump in, we'll head back into the Animus and continue doing some main missions. So be right back. <laughs> 